Okay guys, so I am back after a long time on another video on this tutorial about how to create a room escape game. Now, I put this series on a break for a long time because I had many projects to work on and now I have my exams coming and my time is limited but I am trying to keep up with this series and in summer that I will have plenty of time I will do even more tutorials and even more advanced things on game development so stay tuned so let's continue on our project quick review on what we have so far I hit play and as you can see we have set the navigation through the walls and we have some zooming points or some points that we can change the view of the camera of another perspective and if you recall from the introduction video I had this puzzle that you can arrange the pieces and when you solve this a slot unlocks and you get a hidden key so let's make this puzzle okay so I'm gonna make a UI image where is it where is it where is it it's here and call it call it puzzle right and that image I'm going to give the sprite of puzzle panel. It's here, so drop it and do it. Of course, I need to scale this so it will be bigger. So when you click on the puzzle, that's what the size that will get that you will get. Uh, and it's good, I think. No, here it's good. Okay, so this puzzle has nine images, right? And these images are the, the pieces of this mushroom house. So, I've already painted this house on GIMP. And as you can see, I have this white lines that separate the pieces so what I need to do is set the sprite mode to multiple and go to sprite editor and right now my image is uh, is a whole image and I don't want that I want the image to scatter it to nine different pieces so I'm going to slice it and I'm gonna choose grid by cell size no grid by cell, grid by cell count and I need three columns and three rows. And as my pieces are symmetrical, I will get a nice cut, as you can see. Whenever I select one of its pieces, it's, oops, I did something. Let's cut it again. Okay, so I have three equal in size pieces. Hit apply. And now I have my pieces here. And they, they are called like that, Master Puzzle 0, Master Puzzle 1, Master Puzzle 2, to Master Puzzle 8. And that is fine. That is what I want because I need to match these images, uh, these sprites actually, the sprite names, to the uh, nine, 9 images that I will create within the puzzle so I'm gonna create an image as a children to the puzzle game object and I'm going to give the slot sprite now scale it down and put it right above so it can cover the slot sprite that is behind it yeah so right now I am doing this manually but I'm sure there are better ways to do that uh, if it were just me I would just do it like this align the slot duplicate it 
change this number in order to get it to the right position. But for the sake of this tutorial, I will do it in a different way and I will show you just how. Duplicate the image till I get 9 of them and go to this parent game object, the puzzle, and add component grid layout group. And what that does is that it aligns all the children of this game object to a specific way according to the values you give here. So, yeah, first of all, you need that to be a fixed row count and it needs to be, it needs to be three. And now they are, they have a square alignment, but there is a huge gap, there is a huge gap between each other. So you need to change the spacing and I've already played with these numbers, so I know what values I need to give. You will need to give your own values if you have also different sizes. So just play with it till you get it right, till you get this right. And I want the child alignment to be in the center and in order to bring it up, you need to change the top value. And now I need it to be bigger to cover the panel. And whenever you change the size, you need to change the spacing as well. Okay, now it's good. Just bring it a little to the right, and I think it's centered. And it's good. So now I have nine different slots for every piece of my puzzle. And now I'm going to give them a very fast name, and that will be piece zero for the first and piece one till I get to piece eight in order to correspond to the to the nine sprites here that have that have also the number of their yeah they have a number that represents their position in the puzzle. And you will see maybe later why I'm doing this, but not right now just bear with me. So yeah, piece 5, and this will be piece 6, 7, and 8. Cool. And now if I give to every slot the correct sprite, as you can imagine, I will get my puzzle notes. This here, wow. and this here, and this here. And you need to have a watch sprite in order to be able to navigate. To navigate with uh, three of the pieces of the puzzle. Right. Okay, now. Now, 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 now. Uh, I don't want the puzzle to be solved from the beginning. I want the player to solve it, right? So, I'm gonna give the sprites a random slot in order to be... Yeah. To be not solved. Okay, I will pause the video to do that. Okay, hey, I said not solved. I guess I want to say unsolved, right? Yeah, I want the puzzle to be unsolved. So the player will get to solve this. So I scatter the pieces in random slots in order to look like this. So how this will work is the player will, for example, if he wants to move, he has to move the pieces and whenever there is this empty slot, if you click an image near this empty slot, it will go to the slot until you have the, the sprites in the right position. I think you all have experienced this kind of puzzle. Okay, so I didn't like the arrangement of 
my sprites so I changed them like this and uh, there were also some white lines that I didn't want and what I did was change this, these parameters I changed the size, make it, made it smaller in order to be able to see those lines here that separate the puzzle pieces and what I also did was go to masterpiece image go to the sprite editor and change this in order to align so you have to do this by yourself you just have to play with these lines here so you have so you don't want them to um, to be out of the image and I don't have a specific reason why I made this image so low resolution as all of my other images but yeah it works so it's okay uh, okay now I have my pieces in a random position and that's what I want in order to start scripting at last let's get to it Oh, I forgot to mention that I didn't want this image to be white, right? I wanted to see the slot behind it. So I changed this image to UI mask. Alright, but we will have a problem with that later and I will show you what. And we will solve it. For now it's okay. Um, Okay, so let's open Visual Studio and let's go to our object manage. Okay, first of all, we have this, right? This puzzle UI image. But we don't want this to be displayed when we hit play. Right now, when we hit play, it's displayed. And we don't want that. We want to click on the puzzle here and be displayed. So, for starters, we want this scene manager object to hide the UI in the start of the game. So, I'm going to create another public game object array and this will be UI render objects objects okay and in start okay i'm going to write function for it void render ui did i put a small letter here no i want a capital okay render ui so for int i equals zero to i it's less than UI render objects length right I plus plus a usual for loop and its object that we need to render it will be set to active in the start of the game uh, to inactive actually so UI render objects I set active false and this will be in the start method so render here render how to call it yeah render you here it is render UI so it's simple I just hit play and now ah no 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 wait 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 don't start Okay, <laughs> to do that, of course, we need to. Where is Scene Manager? I have two Scene Manager objects. Why is that? I wonder. Hmm, interesting. Um, okay. Anyway, for now, let's just put the puzzle here 
hit the puzzle here, okay, and hit play. And as you can see, it's gone. So good, good, let's continue. Okay guys, sorry about the display, I just noticed that the image was cropped in the corners. Um, okay, so if you want to check this out, in my grid layout, these are my values that I used. And I also had two scene manager objects, I don't remember why. I deleted the one, the first one and just put an interact script here because we want to interact with objects. And of course, I put the puzzle in the UI rendered objects. So, uh, we are cool now and if you want to see the code that I wrote, if you didn't see it before, it's only this function and this game object list. Uh, okay, so we're good now. Let's write another script. And this script will allow us to display the UI whenever we want it. So this will be a UI displayer. Okay, UI displayer. So within that object, I want the object. That it is to be displayed, so public game object display object. So, whenever uh, what did I do? Write a function, no, I just want public game object, right? So, whichever object that has this script on it. We'll call another game object that will be a UI object to display. So uh, it will inherit from 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 in how do I call it? Interact? What is it? I interactable right. Okay, cool. Cool 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 cool. And now I have to implement function with that. Hmm. I don't know what that is, but for now it's just this. Okay, so whenever it enter, what? What? Okay, I started Visual Studio. Strange things happen today. Okay, now, now, whenever I interact, I want simply to set this game object to be active. Right. So it's quite simple. First of all, okay. So, now, I want to go here and just go here, click this and display the past. So, first of all, I need the uh, every game object and this will be... How did I call this wall? Furniture 1. So this game object just have a space. So this game object contains all the game objects that I displayed in the Fenson 1 sprite wall, if you get what I mean. Uh, and within this game object, first of all, set the canvas inactive so I can see my wall. Send the display image to this. Okay, so I need a game object that has voxel collider. Oh no, not box collider. It will be a. Where was it? Polygon collider. Okay, I did this collider. Yeah, because with box collider you want 
get. You won't think it right. Just put it here. Alright, okay. Photo Glider and it's interactable. Right. Cool. And it is a UI display. And what do I want to display? The puzzle. Simple, right? Enable the canvas again and if all go well, I should be able to display it. Right. There I display it. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Save my scene and go forward. Change this name to Puzzle Displayer. Okay, next script is the Puzzle script. That script will contain the Puzzle Game module. Okay, so with a doll and let's see, let's see. Puzzle. First of all, I need a public pool is completed. Get private set. Um, I also want the um, public void high display. I need the high display functional because right now I can display it, but I cannot hide its display. So, when do I want to hide the display? Whenever I click off the panel, I want to hide the display. So, for example, whenever I click here, or here, or here, or here, I will hide the display, and also whenever I click this, my, uh, this button, I want to hide it. Right. So the first one is uh, if input input get mouse button down zero. Uh, get this and I need to be using event system. Um. Unity engine event systems event system. This is a very classic reference to the event system. Is pointer over game object. So what that does is it informs us it returns a bool whenever our pointer is over a UI element. So if my pointer is hovering over the UI panel, this will be this will return true. So if it's not, it returns false. And whenever it returns false, we want to make it true in order to hide the display. Right. So this game object set active to false when this happens. And where else do I want to hide the display? Whenever I return from the... Yeah, whenever I return to my normal state. And that is here. If you remember, we have these states. Normal zoom change you. And whenever I turn to normal, I want to hide the display of my password. Okay, so how to do this? Um, wait a minute. I want to find the object that contains the display and script. So I'm going to make a private game object and call it image displayer. Okay, and I don't want to find it in the update because that takes CPU power. 
I only won't find it in the start of a game. And so image displayer equals game object. Whoops. Game object find and it's called. How is it called? Display match. Display image like this. Cool. So if a display image, if my display image. Uh, well, no, I call it image displayer. I should call it the same name, right? Just do this for simplify things. Display image and display image. Okay, so if my display image, come on, come on, display image, get component, display image. Oh, things sound very simple. And my state, current state, dot state, no, current state, wait, yeah, I want, I want my current state. Where was I? Here. And if my current state equals display match state, not this display much, but this display much. And this is normal. So if that happens, I want the same thing again. Okay. So, so, so. Put it in the update. And. I should be able to hide the display whenever I want to. Come on. Okay, so I click, I have display. I click, no, I don't hide it. Why is that? If I click here, I don't hide it again. Okay, ah, because, <laughs> of course, I don't have a puzzle component here. I always forget to do that. Save it. Let's try again. Click here, click here, it's gone. Click again, click here, click here, it's gone. Yeah, so that's what I want. That's how I want to manipulate my puzzle, puzzle UI game object. Okay, this part is finished too. Now I want to be able to change my puzzle pieces. So let's do that. So now things get a little complicated. Okay, so first of all, I will change this image back to sprite. Back to sprite. Where was it? This machine puzzle eight. And because I want to be called like this, like the others, you might be wondering why didn't I make the background of this image is white, uh, transparent, and less to white. Yeah, that was a mistake. <laughs> I should have made it transparent. I can't do it. It's not that big deal. But it will be okay because when we complete this puzzle, the image will be gone, and we will see. We will, we will be able to see the slot behind it, where there will be an item. So it will seem like. It's hindered under this white image. Okay, so now I'm going to write a script, new script, and this is going to be puzzle piece. So I want the puzzle pieces to have a script on their own. Well, okay. So now, now, pay attention now. Um, I will inherit our oh, first I need to use Unity Engine UI of course and Unity Engine what was it? Event system right? Okay. And I want to inherit from I point pointer click handler and with this interface I'm able to use this 
function called a pointer click which is whenever I click on a UI whenever I click on this UI game object that the script is attached to uh, this function is be called is being called right that's what it does okay so whenever I click on a image I want to change it to the next image if the next image is the masterpiece number eight that means the white image so if I click this I want it, this ones to switch places to switch slots but if I click this I don't want this to switch with this I only want the near images next to it so what I'm going to do is first of all uh, okay I need to as always I need a private game object it's called puzzle and it will find the puzzle game object. I am going to need that public void start puzzle equals game object find oh wait yeah if you don't do this in the start method you're going to have two problems first of all you won't be able to find it because if you remember in the start method we set this to inact right from the script here so it won't be able to find it later on we need to find it in the start and also what that does is we don't need to call it in the update method every time so it says uh, cpu power 2 so it's better to call it in the start and it's called puzzle right and if puzzle get component puzzle is completed equals true I don't want to change the puzzle pieces anymore so now I don't need the brackets I don't want them disappear just return nothing will happen of course I need two equals here okay so look what I'm going to do if um yeah before I write the if statement I need the var um, var puzzle puzzle pieces it was game uh was find what was it find game objects you need to do the game object and not game object so game objects of type puzzle pieces so whenever i click on a puzzle piece i want to find all the other puzzle pieces and now I'm going to iterate through all of this so for it uh, yeah it's a puzzle piece call it puzzle piece in puzzle pieces so for every puzzle piece in every puzzle piece I'm going to write a very huge if statement right now. So, first of all, if my okay, pay attention now. This game object dot name to string call the stop string and I want this game object name length minus one 
and wait wait okay so I'm, I'm going to write it down and I will explain what I did Okay, so what that does is I'm going to take this game object, this sprite that I'm clicking, uh, use the substring method and give it an index of length minus one. So I will get the last letter of this game object name. So when I click on this sprite, for example, this tree, this tree. I almost used my Greek right now. Okay, this three. I click here. I will get. I will. Uh, the substring method will return the number three. If I click in this four, I will get the number four. So that's what it does. And I want this to convert it to an integer. So I use the int parse method that converts a string to an integer. So I take my my piece number that I click as a string and convert it to an integer. And then I check to see if this value matches of okay this is just bear with me for a while. This is puzzle piece game object to string substring. Same thing with the above. Oh, wait, I'll copy this. And of course, I need the name. Game object name length minus one. Okay. Just build the basin and we'll explain what's happening now. Um, and this will go plus one cool now what I do is I take the, um, the number of the sprite that I click and I take the number of the of another sprite that I iterate and see if this number is equal to the number to the specific number of this loop plus one. That means that I click this four. Okay. So when I click this four, it iterates through all of the pieces and check that if the specific piece, the number plus one this time, is equal to the number that I click. So if I click this four and find piece three plus one. 3 plus 1 equals 4, so this will be equal. So it's actually checking to see if this puzzle piece is in, uh, in the left of the, of the sprite that I click on. I don't know if I made myself clear, if you did understand, but maybe you will in the process. So now I just checked if the left if the specific piece is on the left and I would do it to do it for right, top and down. So this all goes to a very big four. I uh, type these lines for the OR statement and just duplicate it. So this time I will check 
if minus 1 equals this sprite. So this time if minus 1 means that is 5 minus 1, 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. Okay. Uh, if this is okay. Um, I continue. Uh -huh. Place this. Why am I getting an error? Let's just say. Do I have to? Mm. Okay, just bear with me. This is a long process, but we'll get the result that we want. I have already tested this, so don't worry. If you get lost on the way, we will find it in the end. So now I want to check for the if it's up. So let's see. If we have this four up, the p the p that is above this four is p one. So we want the specific p is plus three. And same for the. For the below piece, so it's minus 3. Okay, so why do I get another? Oh, is it because I use a negative number? And I, of course. Here, yeah, right, I need this to be outside of the in parts function right so just put it outside this two and I'm still getting an error from negative numbers let's just take it out yeah it's still inside the in parts <laughs> So many brackets. I can't figure out what's going on. So it goes here, and that goes here. Mm. So that goes here. Maybe I should have paused the video to do that, but maybe it's better to show you exactly what I'm doing. Because it is a little hard to understand. Okay, so I've checked all these conditions. I missed something. It's this. Oh, no, I have it. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Cool, cool. And what do I need else? Um, okay. Okay, we're clear. We made the first step. Let's keep going. Hope you're still watching the video because if you do, we're going to end up to eventually end up with something. Just need a little bit of coding. Okay, so I'm iterating through all of this. Check if it's left, right, above, or below. And if it does, well, if it does, I want to check if this piece is the, if this puzzle piece that I'm iterating. Um, if this piece that I'm iterating is the white it's the white contains the white image equals okay what was the name of it what was it it is it is here master I can copy it master puzzle 
underscore eight. Right, mushroom puzzle. It's like this. Who? Okay. Cool. I think we're almost there. So yeah, if that is true, that means all the conditions are met. And that means that I click on this uh, piece, on piece 4, I check to see, uh, I iterate through every pieces. Check uh, to see if the specific piece is left, right, above or below, and then I'm I want to see if it is the white spread. So if it is, I'm going to change the sprites. So I'm going to write the new function just a little longer and we'll get there. New function, it's called change sprites. And now I want two sprites. Sprite, first sprite, sprite. Second sprite. It is a simple change function that changes the values of, uh, of its parameters, and it's the first sprite, uh, the sprite temp is equal to first sprite, the second sprite is equal to first sprite. And the first sprite is equal to 10. Right. Mm. No. Uh, I need. It. Uh, right. First sprite is equal to second sprite. And the second sprite is equal to 10. Yeah, that's about there. We're getting there. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, I know I'm explaining a lot, but I get the feeling that this is a little hard to understand. But in the end, you'll get it. Maybe some of you already get it, and you're stuck hearing, finish this thing, stop explaining, we know what you're doing. Um, okay. What I did was create a private sprite, complete change sprite, then I'm going to find the sprite. It will be the puzzle piece. Get component image sprite. Right. Change right. This is it. Okay, so I have a sprite, and now I just need to change this. Change sprites. This game object get component. Actually, don't need all this. I just need get component image, and then sprite. And the other is the change. So this will do change, and hopefully this will work. Hopefully, let's try it out. So it doesn't, and that is because, of course, I always forget. Just with the puzzle piece component, don't forget that. And let's try again. Click here and again, it doesn't change nothing. Why is that? I wonder. Oh, I think I know. I need to change this to what was it? What was it? I think it was. Canvas group, right? And block rate, block rate tasks, 
and it's not interactable and that is because whenever I click on the on the image of the piece it first interacts with the past game object because it has a priority to the rate casting now I don't get Okay, okay, give me a second. Okay, two things, guys. First of all, let me show you that it works, finally. So, you see, I'm pressing the sprites and I'm changing them. Cool! Finally, we'll get to that. And first of all, you need to add the canvas group for all the pieces. And check this. Ignore the parent group. So when you get that canvas group, and this is applied to the children as well. So you need to pull the canvas group and ignore the parent group. Okay, and the second was that, of course, of course, I need to pass a reference of the image in order to change the sprite. Because if you use the sprite reference that won't change nothing okay so last of all let's just use why did i use public here why am i keep using public i don't need public okay void 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 Complete puzzle. This is quite simple. If first of all, if it's completed, we don't need to call that. Just return, and uh, we're going to do a similar, a similar procedure with the puzzle piece, but much more simpler. So, puzzle pieces, call them puzzle pieces equal. Find game objects type puzzle piece. Iterate through them. And if the puzzle piece name The string, although it's not necessarily needed, it's equal to puzzle piece get component image. Of course, of course, of course, I need to use unit engine that's UI. And if I get the image component and take the sprite, the name of the sprite, the string so if I want this to be an if statement, right? if if uh, for example piece 0 the 0 so the last letter of this name is equal to its image last letter so that means that piece 0 is here the sprite of piece 0 is here so that's what we want and actually what we want is is completed is true I'm going to do it as a flag so if that not happens all of this in parentheses that not happens well is completed equals false so if every piece is its in its correct slot is completed will remain true so we're going to return is is completed uh, return Cool. Okay. I think that's all. 
so put it in the um, put it in the um, update complete puzzle yeah I think we're done let's just debug this and for the back purposes I am going to put every sprite in its correct position except the last one so I can just change since the last slots and don't have to solve the whole puzzle oh yeah let's do it change that and what what is this back block oh I use this to debug the puzzle pieces, I don't need that. Uh, I didn't get this completed message, but of course, but of course, yeah, my mind is a bit tired. You know what you have to do. Use the int parse method to get the last letter. And not just the whole name. So, so use it for that too. This is a long statement. This will be this game object. Get component image sprite name and this here. I hope you understand what I'm doing. So this for this, this for this, one more. This is for this. No. Okay, so many brackets. Yeah, just check this. It's a bit of a trouble, but hopefully now I'm done with this whole thing. What? Yeah, maybe I should do some things off camera. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. And I also changed this game object, it's puzzle piece. So I'm taking puzzle piece, the name, the last letter of the name is equal to its sprite last letter and as you see, I get the completed message at last. So that was a bit of a hard procedure. Actually, there was a lot of coding but we get we got a satisfying result okay that was for this video um i try to update this tutorial every week but in the summer i uh, will have plenty of time and we will do lots of things 
and even more interesting we will go about 3d games 3d modeling animating every fun stuff about game development so hope to see you soon and i hope you didn't get too much tired of this video thank you guys